afternoon. Our lecture for this afternoon would be Public Health in India. So this is a um, collection of all the reports that uh, my previous students have had with regards to public health in India such that this is a work in progress. So outline would be health and public health. Public health in India before the colonial period and during the colonial and after. Essential public health functions and mortality transition in India. So we start with public health always with the definition of health. And according to the WHO, it defines health as the state of a complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This you have learned in your first year of preventive medicine and community health. It, however, does not define what public health is. That, on the other hand, is inevitable. And a large of number of deaths are premature and preventable. Public health is related to preventing premature and unavoidable deaths. So this would encompass from illness to accidents, environment, etc., etc., most of which we would study in our later lectures in Preventive Medicine and Community Health 3. So for our model of health, we have learned that exposure to risk factors and a failure of body resistance could bring about poor health and eventually bring up disease. So this would either bring about the um, recovery, disability, or death, the three outcomes of illness. So if the disease condition is avoided, probability of the chance of death or disability can drastically be reduced such that public health is therefore described as the science and art of preventing diseases, prolonging life, and promoting health through organized efforts and informed choices. And it deals with a group of people rather than individuals. So there are different dimensions to public health. First would be health promotion, disease prevention, then secondary level would be early diagnosis and prompt treatment. And then at the tertiary level, it's disability limitation and rehabilitation. In India, the Indian approach to health is enshrined in the concepts and principles of Ayurveda, which means the science of life. So Ayurveda is one of the oldest systems of healthcare in the world and it deals with both preventive and curative aspects of health. Health defined by the WHO is very similar to the concepts of Ayurveda. Ayurveda is very important such that there's an Ayush, Department of Ayush in India, as they call it, that serves uh, with letter A focusing on Ayurveda. As to the Western approach, the Western approach of avoiding diseases, death, and disability is traditionally focused on personal hygiene, public sanitation during the 19th century. And this approach, combined with better food availability, paid rich dividend in the developed countries in reducing morbidity and mortality. We have different components of public health. Foremost is epidemiology, which we've had in part in preventive medicine and community health too, which measures disease conditions in relation to the population at risk. So of course, you had to have statistics tackled in your first year. This is collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of epidemiologic data. And health services. These are services directed towards meeting the health needs of the people. Before the colonial period, 
public health was little known and little activities were to be done. Mainstream system of healthcare was the Ayurveda. Home-based care appeared to be the dominant feature, and there appeared little organized efforts or institutional care to treat diseases and prevent deaths. During the colonial period, the evolution of public health system during the colonial period followed the same path was followed in Britain. Public health efforts were focused largely on protecting British civilians and army cantonments. Sanitation was given the top priority, and focus was also given on early detection and control of contagious disease such as cholera and the plague. During the British period, training and research institutions in public health were put in place, public health legislations were put in place, and sanitary departments were established. This would ascertain local sanitary conditions, vital registration, monitoring disease trends, vaccination programs, and technical advice on control of evidence. Public health efforts were restricted to British civilians and military, and that was a major constraint. The Indian masses remained deprived of the dividends of these efforts. At the time of independence, only 3% of households in India had toilets. Water, drainage, and waste disposal services were obviously lacked. And the impact on Indian masses were as follows. Mortality spikes were sharply reduced. Mortality from cholera and plague was sharply reduced. Diseases like malaria and gastroenteritis continued to take a heavy toll. So even it was restricted to the British civilian and military establishment, there were still impact on Indian masses. This is primarily because of since the British would be protected, the Indians were also protected as well. And this is the concept of herd immunity. In independent India, evolution of public health care system in was shaped by two important factors. The report of the first health survey and development committee, this is the Bore Committee, constituted during the colonial rule. Emergence of modern medical technology for the prevention and control of diseases, especially communicable diseases. The Bore Committee, which was appointed in 1943, recommended comprehensive remodeling of health services. There was integration of preventive and curative health services at all levels, hospital based health care system. There's a development of primary health centers in two stages, and there is training in preventive and social medicine. The Bore Committee is a short-term plan which shows primary health care for every 40,000 population. This is to be managed by two doctors, four primary health nurses, a midwife, one nurse, the long-term plan of which would be a primary health unit for every 10 to 20,000 population with 75 beds, a secondary unit with a 650 bed hospital, and a district unit with 2,500 bed in hospital. With the continuous advent of medical technology, there's a mass production of antibiotics and vaccines for highly preventable and high mortality and disability diseases, such as tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, measles, and polio. The recommendations of the Bore Committee and the availability of preventive and curative medical technology resulted in the evolution of hospital-based public health systems. Public health arrangements created during the colonial period were replaced by hospitals and health centers. This eventually merged with the medical services in India. However,
However, these recommendations were only accepted partially. We're in one primary health care center for every 30,000 population. Only six beds in each primary health center and only one doctor. So in ideal, it was good but in actual, it was not really that implemented. And this situation has remained largely unchanged. Since the Boring Committee, numerous, numerous committees were constituted to evolve the public health system. And some of the recommendations of these committees were adopted, some were not by the government. And all committees retained the core of the model recommended by the Boring Committee. Such examples would be the Model Yard Committee, which strengthened PHCs before establishing new ones. So, primary health care should provide preventive, promotive, and curative services. Strengthen subdivisional and district hospitals and the creation of all India health services. And the Chada Committee in the 1963, where the malaria worker is to function as a multi purpose worker. Mukherjee Committee, with, um, which entails a separate staff for family planning program, malaria activities to be delinked from family planning activities, and the Jundalwala Committee, which showed a unified approach for all problems instead of a segmented approach for different programs. So these are medical care and public health programs to be put under charge of a single administrator. Other committees would be the Kartar Singh Committee. So this is the concept of the male-female public health worker. One primary health center to cater to 50,000 population. And each center should have a 16 um, capacity which would cater to a 33 to 5,000 population. And your Srivastav Committee, this would be creation of bonds of paraprofessional and semi-professional health workers from within the community itself, such that it would develop a referral service complex. The Bajaj Committee is formulation of national medical and health education policy, formulation of a national health manpower policy, educational commission for health sciences, health science universities in various states, health manpower cells, vocationalization of education at the secondary level as regards to the health-related fields, and realistic health manpower survey. A population-based normative approach is adopted for establishing hospitals and health centers. So there should be one health center for every 5,000 population, one primary health center for every 30,000 population, and one central health center for every 80 to 120,000 population in 30 beds. These norms are government institutions and are for the rural areas only. For the urban areas, no norms have been defined. So nearly all government, civil, and district hospitals and most of the CHCs are located in the urban areas. So no information is available about the private health system. So is, this is the summary of the number of hospital centers of different levels in India in the year 2007. One fallout of the hospital-based public health approach was the neglect of public health legislation. So a model public health act was drafted in 1950s by the government of India and was eventually revised in 1987. This act, though, is yet to be adopted by any of the constituent states of the country. The hospital-based public health system led to the medicalization of the system. The focus has been on medical services. Public health services have largely been neglected. So 
So poor public health services result in high cost of illness, fertility, and death. And the main sufferers are the people, especially the poor and the deprived. So the epidemiological and statistical dimensions of public health have been grossly neglected. Lack of epidemiological and statistical database affected public health plan. In the absence of necessary information, planning reduced to a normative mechanical exercise, often out of context to people's And this com gets complicated because of social, economic, cultural, and economic diversity that leaves normative planning virtually redundant. Decentralization of the health system could not succeed because of the lack of epidemiological and statistical information necessary for planning for public health services. So public health in India is hospitalized. Health planning is concerned more with the health of the healthcare delivery system than the health of the people. The remedy was sought in terms of specific national health and disease control programs, and there are numerous programs as well, such as reproductive and child health program, TB control programs, malaria control program, blindness control, waterborne disease, leprosy eradication, and iodine deficiency. So all national disease control programs are implemented through the existing government hospitals and health centers. Over the years, a campaign approach has been involved to implement many of the national health and disease control programs. Successful campaigns have often been followed by unsuccessful maintenance. Hence, we will learn how important it is eventually in our later lectures to establish programs, implement it, and at the same time monitor and evaluate these programs as well to ensure sustainability. Focus on medical services and neglect public health services. Since there would be lack of modern public health regulation and lack of systematic planning, thereby poor sustainability of public health efforts. So the absence of epidemiological and statistical skills at district and below district level shows that there's no micro-level planning and no public health action. And in summary, this would be the essential public health functions that should be present in a public health system. So you monitor health, you know how to diagnose and investigate, you inform, educate, and empower, we mobilize community policy partnerships such that we develop policies. And then we enforce laws, link form linkages, assure competent workforces, and evaluate such that your system management would be centered on research about this following category. These are the essential public health functions in India. And look at the capital expenditure of the following. So you have to have emergencies and disasters, management capacity, research, quality human resources, evaluation, policy and planning, participation, regulation, health promotion, surveillance, and health situations. And these are the statistics of mortality transition in India. And there's a lot of room for improvement. In summary, there's still a widespread existence of preventable diseases and deaths. And it's a disgrace to a society which tolerates it. Okay, thank you for listening to our BMCH3 lecture. Comment and subscribe below your name and student number for attendance.